Hi, this is Rob Dickinson, and this is Cars and Culture with Jason Stein. Rob, it is a pleasure to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you, Jason. Uh, pleasure to be here. So I want to start off with a line that came from a magazine quote from uh, a few years ago. I think it sums it up well. It talks about the seductive $600,000 plus supercars coming out of Singer Vehicle Design in Sun Valley started out as decades old Porsche 911s before being rebuilt by Singer founder and Porsche fanatic Rob Dickinson to a standard of mechanical and aesthetic excellence that even the car maker itself never imagined. <laughs> you agree with that? <laughs> Would they agree with that? Um, I think you'd have to ask Porsche that, but um, <laughs> I, um, I, I, I think Porsche have aspired to the um, to the same level of excellence that, that that we aspire to for for, and that's why they're still around, and that's why they're so brilliant, and that's why they're so loved, and uh, you know that that was certainly an inspiration to us. Um, I I think um, trying to execute a vision as exquisitely um as possible i think um as this was, was certainly our mantra when we started um um that 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 sense of, uh, of of showering this 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 icon with extravagant love i think is i i think uh, in my mind 12 years ago was a very worthy thing to 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 do and um it looks like other people think the same way too so it's 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 pretty awesome it's unbelievable to imagine that it has been a dozen years. I mean, for you to for you to step back and, and and think about that journey over the course of the last twelve years has got to strike some pretty amazing emotions inside of you now. Yes, I mean it, it has. I mean we're not we're not um, we're not great at at, at, at victory laps or, or or looking over our shoulder and, and looking at what we've what we've done. We're, we're, we've I'm, I'm, and I'm still coming to terms with, with whatever it is we have done um you know it, it it's it's just been a roller coaster of, of of a journey and um i mean people say we've had overnight success and of course everyone who's had apparent overnight success it hasn't it's never been overnight success has it it's it's, it's always it's always been a lot of hard work and a lot of uh, a lot of time and effort um but no i mean it, it it we we have arrived at a place where um i never imagined we would there i i would be lying to say that this was some kind of uh, grand plan that that we that we're enjoying at the moment it isn't i i i the only thing i knew for sure um 12 years ago was that that this was a good idea <laughs> well i was convinced <laughs> about it anyway um and um and uh, for someone who sometimes doesn't listen to our, their intuition as much as they should or certainly hasn't done so in the past as much perhaps as much as they should this was one aspect um where i had no absolutely no doubt that um something good would happen from reimagining and celebrating the most important sports car in in, in the manner that uh, i had in my mind and uh, i didn't know that it would come to this but i knew something good would come from it i think that that, that was the uh, that was certainly the uh, the beginning and the end of our business plan if we had one 12 sure. years ago which we didn't it was just a, a voyage of faith and um and passion i guess you also had faith passion and obsession i would argue and there's an obsession and attention to detail that I think lies behind your careers, both in music as well as automotive design. And I want to go back to something that you've said before. As a musician, you chased perfection. And you felt that you had important groundbreaking music to try to make. And the only route to get there was to take the time, chase the right sound, work, rework until you had something that you wanted. I'm guessing mm. those same principles would equally apply to what you've done here. Yes, yes, they do. Um, and I, 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 I guess it's, um, yes, it, 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 it is. I, I do like things to be correct. <laughs> well, whatever correct is, I, I do like things to, I, I hate, I hate it when potential hasn't been realized. Um, um, I like things to be as good as they can possibly be. Um, I do have obsessive compulsive disorder. I, 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 uh, I, I realized, I realized I, I did technically have that when I, when I, when I thought back for a moment, this was a couple of years ago and think, yeah, at the age of seven, I did used to go around our house back in England and, and check every faucet or tap was turned off 
<laughs> at at before I could go to sleep, and I had to do it twice. And I and I and, and it never occurred to me that it was anything particularly weird. But of course, it's a, it's obviously a telling sign of, of 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 some kind of OCD. I don't think I've got it particularly badly, but I've certainly got it badly enough to to, to start a rock band and to start a car company. So um, make of that what you will. But yes, it it, it is. I hate things that aren't as good as they can be. Um, I think is is is, is perhaps a, a way of, of 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 putting it in a nutshell. You also have said that the road from rock music to reimagining Porsche 911s has been a long one, and you spent those ten years in music utterly fanatical about the band Catherine Wheel and the music that you were making, and then. You get to a point where you realized, as as you said, you felt that you had made all, you had said everything that you wanted to say musically. Is that the gist of it? Kind of the gist of it, yes. The, 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 the band lasted for a very neat 10 years from, from 1990 to 2000. Um, then then I, 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 did feel that, I did feel I had some more music in me. I, I mean, the band, the band stopped we'd had enough that we'd had enough we, we, we still liked each other as, as 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 friends but the idea of 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 um another 18 months of making another record that we had no passion for and was would be a contractual obligation record and then touring mercilessly as we used to that held little appeal at that point for all for all of us and um and I think that every band has its natural arc. Um, I think we'd reached our our nadir or our apex or whatever the whatever the, the correct <laughs> metaphor <laughs> is. Um, and we weren't going to at that point. I, I hasten to say at that point we weren't going to make a better record than we'd made before. And that for me was, I think, for all of us was a, was a good reason to stop. That's not to say that we won't return um but that's 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 a whole other conversation um um uh then i went and made a record of my own which i'm very proud of which is which is mm -hmm. which is what brought me to los angeles in 2003 and which what which is what brought me indirectly to singer so um so it, it was it was a, a fortuitous having fallen in love with california in the early 1990s when the band first started playing here um to come back and make a record here and then finally live here was all, all seemed rather neat and correct and um i certainly find myself in on uh, in the right corner of planet earth to do what i want to do whether it's music or or dream about cars and to you know to suck up that rather cliched but very very true californian spirit of anything is possible and well, um and um you know singer is an absolute function and result of california in, in in its car culture in its sunshine and its optimism in its um, willingness to accept new ideas and its willingness to dream and um none of this would have happened if i'd have stayed in england I, I, yeah I, the, I, I, the, the encouragement to dream times. the encouragement um, to dream well, right well yeah i mean i i mean I've, i often I found myself saying that Los Angeles is sometimes mindlessly optimistic, you know, <laughs> which, which is, which is, it, it's the, it's the town of, of, of fantasy, isn't it? And it's the town of, 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 of even if something isn't real, you can pretend it's real. And then suddenly, if you believe it's real enough, suddenly some things can become real and, and, um, and you don't get laughed at when you're trying to tell your friends that you're going to do, try and do something that's a bit unusual or a bit ambitious. It's like, Oh, that's cool. You know, because they they're here trying to do something probably equally as unusual and ambitious as well. So you're with like-minded people. The sun is shining. There's a joint to smoke, and uh, and, and and the sky's the limit. You know, so um, and and this is what I needed. Um, I needed sunshine, and I needed optimism, and I needed hope. And um, so coming to, to coming to LA to make my solo record, um, which I did in 2003. Um, that that was the end of me making music and that really was my um okay this is as good as i can do it if the, you know if if uh if 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 and i was 45 then and felt that i didn't necessarily want to be rocking and rolling forever 
at, at that age. And um, my passion for cars had, had maintained throughout the, the, the 15 or 16 years of, of making music. Thank goodness, because suddenly I had a second passion and this idea uh, for singer, which grew from a car that I that I that I restored and modified myself when I got to when I got to LA in two thousand and three, um, has given me this, I guess, a second act for want of a better term, and 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 something, something that um, I've had a fever grip on for for another ten or twelve years, just like just like I did music, and it's the, it's the only way I can function really. I'm not very good at um, multitasking. <laughs> I'm not very good at. Uh, I, I, I hear a lot about people who have seem to have projects on the go here, and they're working with these people over there. And this, I mean, it blows my mind. I'm, I mean, I, I, I'm totally incapable of that. It's just, it's tunnel vision for me. And, and I've got something. If there's something that's um, in my mind to achieve, it's like uh, everything else falls by the wayside, and that's all I can do. So that's that's, and that's of course been singer for the last twelve years. So let's go back to the modified 911. And while you had worked at Lotus and you had worked with a gentleman named Peter Stevens, who's the man behind the McLaren F1 and the Lotus Esprit, and yes. you had worked with Julian Thompson as well uh, while you were at Lotus, is it? It's not exactly intuitive that that just because you landed at LAX and saw the sunshine and wanted to live uh, in in a in a land of optimism. That you could start modifying vehicles that then would lead to where we are today. There's a bridge there, isn't there, Rob? Well, well, well. well the, the bridge, the, the bridge is a, a deep, almost fervent and rather uncomfortable obsession with cars um, from from the age of five, and, and and then I picked up the guitar at the age of fourteen. Um, so it's been cars and music, cars and music, cars and music, and then you know I I, I studied at um, Coventry to become a car designer um i didn't finish that course because my band was doing quite well and i kind of I had a hiatus from from university uh polytechnic as it actually as it was it was coventry polytechnic it's coventry university now it's a fantastic one of the one of the few uh, automotive industrial design courses that, that that i luckily managed to get on and learned a lot there but realized that i kind of the music was kind of taking over um uh, I, I, I was living um, on the east coast of England near Norwich, which, of course, is where, where Lotus are based. And I, I thought during my hiatus to, to, to explore the mu music further, um, I might try and get a job. And Peter Stevens, wonderful Peter Stevens, who's a total hero of mine, um, gave me a job um, sitting next to um, Simon Cox and Julian Thompson, two absolute rock stars of, 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 of car design. And you can imagine what I learned there um, during that experience. Um, um, and then my band got a recording deal and then that was it. So, so that, that's, if any bridging went on, that's, that, that was, that was, that was the bridge. And then, and then um, clearly the allure of rock, of, 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 of rocking and rolling was pretty strong. Um, and I think it's, in many ways, it might have saved my love of cars. I think if I'd have pursued a, a proper career in car design, my passion for cars may have, may have, may have left me. It all would have um, been too serious, wouldn't it? Well, it would have been getting a job doing, doing, yeah. doing, your, doing your hobby, which I guess you could, you could argue that, you know, getting a record deal and, 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 and being in a band is, 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 is exactly that, but it didn't feel like that. Um, so throughout throughout the years of making music, you know, I was voraciously buying all the magazines that I've been buying since the age of five, and was dreaming and scheming and trying to save money to buy this and that, and and uh, so so it never went away. And and then uh, I had a I had a very small I had a couple of Porsches in England at, at the end at the end of the of the decade in two thousand that that I had. Um, one of which was a was a quite a rare 911 that I'd spent a lot of time and money restoring to original specifications. And once I finished doing that, all I wanted to do was modify it and perfect mm -hmm. it or change it. And that was a that was a very telling moment for me. So when I when I fin finally rocked up in Los Angeles in 2003, I sold those cars and used the money to make my own perfect 911, which allowed me total freedom, total. Californian free spiriting, hot rodding, 
do what you want to do because there are no rules. And I made my own perfect little 911 and that car, which we, which we call the Brown Bomber, which is sitting in the, in the design studio right now, is um, was the genesis of, 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 of Singer. That was the car that I, li I, I was living in West Hollywood. I was making music. I was pretending I was Steve McQueen. I was pretending I was James <laughs> Dean. I had, a, I had a car that I'd drive out to Willow Springs and do track days and do autocrosses with. I'd take it to my favorite bars and restaurants and hang out with my friends and the, the car and the car. Uh, the, I, I, I joined a group called the R Group, um, which was a, a fabulous uh, group of guys that uh, are like minded in, in, uh, in restoring and, uh, and modifying old Porsche 911s and learned a lot and stole a lot of ideas from those guys and um, just just submerged myself in the Porsche California culture. Um, for five or six years, seven years, and 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 this idea slowly came to me through 2005, 2006. By and by 2007, I was absolutely obsessed, obsessed with this idea of creating a perfect or restoring and modifying a 911 to some sense of definitive presentation is that air cooled era from 1964 to 1989 is there a is, is there is there a greatest hits car is there a car that sums up that era that has been as to be you know if, if an alien came down from from planet zog and said what the hell are you guys so excited about the porsche 911 for and i showed them my car and they'd go oh, <laughs> they would get yeah, it i get it <laughs> right and we get it well, it is beautiful said, and it drives like this and the yeah. gear change feels like this and the brakes are like this and the Fuchs wheels look like this and the stance is like this and the colors is like that. It would, it, it would encompass this, this magnificent piece of German engineering, which, um, which, which uh, into some sense of uh, perfection in, in, in certainly in my mind and I, I couldn't shake it. And, um, and we went and, um, I was foolish enough to 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 uh, ask for the help of my soon-to-be father-in-law, uh, Glenn Chang, who fa founded Singer with me, and and gave me some money to go and build my dream car, and he, and I did, and here we are. You said you didn't care how much the car cost. You knew that if you could make it look good enough, you'd want it. Customers would want it, and they wouldn't care if they had to pay more money for it. That was kind no, of no, and and this 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 is this is the philosophy of Singer, really. I mean, Singer is a philosophy. Sounds a bit pious and pompous, maybe, but it is, and it's and it's and it and it's and it's one of. I don't care what it's going to cost to get the result that I want. I want it, which means other people will want it. I mean, it's a desperately dangerous um, uh, uh, proposition to, to 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 hang a business on, isn't it? You know, build it and they will come. But for whatever reason, I, you know, I'm, I'm filled, uh, not always filled with confidence, but I was filled with a lot of confidence that people will get this. I didn't know to what extent people would get it, but if that sense, if that sense is, if, if you are searching for genuine, true magnificence and you can, even if you fail, but you manage to communicate that in whatever you are trying to make magnificent and in, and in your language and your communication, people will, will respond uh, because that they'll respond that they know they're not being hoodwinked. They'll respond because they're not being bullshitted and they'll respond that there is an absolute madman trying to do something that probably he's not charging enough for that. I want that. I want to at least investigate. And, and, and then of course it's like, is it good enough? And then of course that's when, we, we, you know, the, the one book I've read on breeding, building a brand, which was, uh, the first chapter, I only got through the first chapter, which says you cannot advertise your way to, 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 to creating a brand. You have to uh, have to have other people tell the world that, that you're brilliant was something that, um, word of mouth, the, 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 that third party validation is something that we took extremely seriously. Singer have never advertised and never will. Um, and I knew that the only way that we could, I could prove my bullshit <laughs> or prove that, uh, or prove would be to give it to the kind of people who don't bullshit and who tell the world that whether something is crap or something is good. And, and we, we knew we had to, we had to create and restore a 911 in, in a way that Chris Harris, Jay Leno and Top Gear and all the people have said nice things about our work would appreciate. 
and I knew exactly how good the car needed needed to be. I knew exactly how good it needed to be, and we did, we did as a team. And as the as the team grew, and and Maz joined the 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 the, the, the company, and we had more. We had I, I had a, a a greater group of people around me who believed that what I believed. We we managed to we managed to to to, to produce this car that that hit those marks, but um um. And I look back on it now and I think, well, it, uh, that, that seemed pretty simple. It wasn't simple at all. It was t- absolutely terrifying, but always terrifying from, from distractions and difficulties, not from questioning our, our, our proposition. We never questioned our proposition, which, was, which is, which is uh, you know, a, a pursuit of excellence at all costs. And if it has to be expensive, we're sorry. <laughs> um, and right. if that's the only thing we have if that's the only thing we have to apologize for well it, it, you know i can't afford what, what what the cars that we build well someone else will and that will lead to good things and 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 we live vicariously through our clients who of course are the collaborative glue that that uh that that, that allows us to exist restored reimagined reborn is how your work is described and You've said before, you take a client's tired 9-11 and breathe new life into it, ready for a thrilling second act. I mean, this is like I'm reading sheets of music here, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> but I want you to just tell the story just for a moment about why the 9-11, because, of course, it's been you know, there. There are folks who do wonder. Uh, the story is well known if you know Rob, and it goes back to a, a family holiday. Uh, when you were, um, uh, you know, a, a, a small age. boy, right? At a tender age, exactly. Yes. Well, well, it's it's my my wonderful parents from 1970 to 1985, which is when I stopped going on vacation with them. Were both teachers, and that means in England that the summer holidays, the summer vacations, are six weeks long. From 1970 to 1985, we would jump in whatever car we had, and we would drive to the south of France, and we would camp for six weeks in the south of France. And it was utterly idyllic. My parents were reasonably not well off. And we would we would trundle down. We started at the first the first two, the first 1970 to 1973, we were in a red Volkswagen Beetle. Uh, India a, t- red. Uh, India India red VW Beetle. Goodness me, Jason, Jason, you've certainly done some homework. Well done. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, we were towing it towing a trailer full of Heinz baked beans. And a tent <laughs> on the top, and 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 got an image. So 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 what these trips to the Riviera um, did was utterly inspire and light a fire in a very young mind of the magnificence of the European sports car. So I fell in love with Alpines, I fell in love with Fassel Vegas, I fell in love with Poirs, I fell in love with Citroens and Peugeots and Renaults. My father was a total Francophile. After the, v, after the VW Beetle, which was clearly a bit of a blip, uh, we, we, uh, we, the, 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 the first great, wonderful memory of, of, of my, uh, another memory of mine of 1973 is my father taking delivery of a new Renault 16 TS, mm. white, Mm-hmm. Wex seventy forty seven L was the, was the registration plate, and we'd go down to down to France in a little bit more comfort in our Renault sixteen. And I say this because the part of Singer is an emotional understanding of the appeal of the road trip and the appeal of dreaming of whether you're driving through Tuscany or whether you're driving through the Riviera or whether you're driving through, uh, you know, the, the, the Pyrenees in Spain, it, 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 it's the emotional aspect of being in a fantastic piece of machinery and going somewhere. And, and this is a long winded way of saying how I, how, my, my father introduced me to the Porsche 911 on an auto route, the A9 auto route in August, 1970. Mm as we were trundling along this auto road and this car came up behind us and he said, look, 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 look over your shoulders, boys, look, look what's coming up behind us. And there was this, this rather happy, smiling face, the headlights were on. And um, it, this, this, it was a, it was a metallic green 911 Targa and it 
tore past us at what felt like a thousand miles an hour. And as it passed the car, I was fascinated to see that to see that the back of the car looked very, very different to the front of the car. This 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 is my memory of, of that moment where the front of the car, the front of an old 911 has a big smiling happy face, two big eyes for headlights, and a big smiling bumper. I thought that's a that's a happy looking thing. And then as it tore past, the back of the car had this had this utterly different demeanor, which was this. As we can imagine, it was accelerating, so there was so 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 the rear wheels were under negative camber, so they were had this kind of knock need delicacy, and also rather, uh, uh, it, it felt it just felt a bit uncomfortable. But more importantly, the the the, the rear lights were cross-eyed. The rear lights of a 911 look kind of cross-eyed because of yeah. the way that the lights are, and 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 it, and of course it was it it looked angry. It looked angry and pissed off, and it was squatting down at the back and knock kneed, and it zoomed off into the distance. And my dad turned around and said, "That's a Porsche 911." And that that was the mo- that was the moment I went, "What the fuck was that?" <laughs> and here we were here we were sat in a VW Beetle, of course, which which was the the godfather of the 911. Yeah, I was going to say it. same family so, member. <laughs> so, so you know, here we are, we sat in. I remember the black vinyl seats, uh, you know, basket weave vinyl vinyl seats very vividly and and i remember just you know i, I mean my, me and my brother our heads turned like you know like people watching a tennis match and it was like wow it was a real wow moment and it was a real wow what what was that i mean I, it was like that's weird that's a funny car right it's smiling at the front angry at the back super fast super small it was smaller it felt smaller than our beetle um and the fascination began and um and that's 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 where the um, that's where things started, I guess. Timeless, timeless existence. Yeah. The fact that it the 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 design and the shape and everything that 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 singer is about is about that enduring quality and and persistently consistent, right? Is I think a way that you would say it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, you know, neurotically and conservatively developed in a very Germanic way um, over 40 years, you know, incrementally yeah. ch- would change a little bit this year and then we change a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Fascinating. Just as, fascinating. As Ferdinand Porsche said, beauty comes from functionality rather than embellishment. Absolutely. The 911 is, of course, true to that. Absolutely. And, and, you know, we ask ourselves, why is it so adored and loved by so many? Well, well. You know, it, 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 no other car has has had such an important impact on people's lives because the 911 can become a family member, it can become a good companion, and this is what I always describe the 911 as a good, as a good companion because it it does it, it 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 whatever mood you're in, the car goes okay. I'm up for that. We're going yeah, shopping. Yeah, true. I'm up for that. <laughs> going to the track. Yeah, I'm up for that. We're going on a tour. Yeah, I'm up for that. We're going to go and pose on King's Road in London. Yeah, look good. Yeah, I'm up for that. It, it, it's, it's a good companion. It's the only car you need is, argu- it, 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 it is the Porsche 911, arguably. You oh, put your kids in so the back. Well you, you can put the groceries in the front. You can drive across the world and know that the car's not going to break and it will win races. What on earth can you compare it to? Nothing is what you can compare it to. Um, now, I, I, plenty of people who don't, uh, who, who don't love the 911 like like I do and like many others, but you can't deny it. And that's why it's so special. And that's why it's worth the, worthy of this extraordinary, extravagant lavishment that we put on it, in my view. And and my my firm contention that there were people who with sim- who were similarly minded to me, who would get what what I was trying to do. And um, it looks, it looks, it looks like that was that was a that was a good thought. Indeed. And so you started Singer Vehicle Design in 25 square feet of rented space in a hot rod shop along a grimy stretch of the San Fernando Valley, full of automotive junkyards, with a yep. spray painted motto: "Everything is important." <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. Yes, ex- exactly. That 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 was. I think it was year three when we were um, we'd taken over that complete building. My my uh, my great colleague Tim Gregorio had a had a hot rod shop that um, I rented some space from when we started when we did the initial clay modelling of, of of the first car. Um, 
and within three or four years, we'd, uh, Tim, Tim was working with us and we'd, we'd taken over the, the building. And um, I remember we were, we were building one of the, I think it was car four or five. And um, it was 11, 11 o'clock at night where I used to stay very late at night once everyone had gone home and I'd walk around the car and I would put, um, I would just check on progress. And I found myself, as I used to do, was, was writing a, a, a post-it note and with an arrow on it, um, um, this needs to line up better. This uh, this is important, and and I I I, I was so I walked around the car for about an hour, looking at the areas that weren't quite quite uh, ready for prime time. And I stepped back, and there was about twenty five of these post it notes on the car, with <laughs> this this is important written on it with an arrow. And I went, Jesus! And I, so I went, Does this really have to be this? And so I, I I and I wrote on the table in front of me, everything is important. And I thought, yeah, maybe that's worth maybe that's worth publicising a little bit bigger. So I picked up a spray can and wrote, everything is important in huge letters on the white wall, so everyone would see it when they came in in the morning, and it, and 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 where I'd see it, and we would all know that 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 everything is important. I mean, it's it's a bit of an empty phrase in some ways because if everything is important then nothing then, is important <laughs> exactly exactly if you if you want to follow some some del some the, the, you know the, that that kind of philosophy which i which i totally understand but in that moment in that moment everything was it seemed to be utterly important and it was like is this possible am, am i going to drive myself crazy with this um but it is something that is an easy to understand philosophy of singer, and it just and it just doesn't mean the cars. I mean that, that since I wrote that thing on the wall, it's meant a lot more to me. It's it's how we treat our colleagues, it's how we run the company, and crucially, it's how we how we how we communicate and and how we relate to our clients, and and in many ways, singer again through the 12 year journey that we've taken yes we're a car company yes we 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 we, we restore and, and reimagine Porsche 911s but what we've really done is made new relationships with new individuals on which through which we have met through the Porsche 911 and it's those relationships that have caused us to 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 get wind under our wings and to become a very different company that it, that is aware of itself in, in in quite a different way where we must and, I, and we we know our clients very well and we know that they've got ex, some of them got extensive car collections and some of them deal with other car companies and some of the, some of the other uh, some other car companies let them down regularly with how they're treated and we don't want to do that we, we, we i'm determined that that we will be excellent in all corners of our business and that and that means dealing with other human beings whether it's our colleagues at, at work or whether it's the people that commission our cars and i think on that bait that's how you build a company and that's how you build a brand and it's one on one little building blocks of sincerity authenticity and um just being good good to each other um and i think and i think if, if you, you can build a car company on that and i think hopefully we're proving it so the rock and roller becomes who who hasn't yet finished the first chapter of the business leadership book has become an expert in or is trying to become an expert in being a great business leader as well that's probably well, not a place where you would have seen yourself before no right? it's not i, I, I mean there, there's no there's no there's no business heritage in my family well not in my direct family at all um as i say my my, my parents were vo vocational passionate teachers perhaps what my my mother was a extremely gifted educate educator and ran one of the finest schools in england as, as the principal and she ran a business she was she was she was a teacher a starter but but when you're running a school you're running a business you're putting a team mm -hmm. together and you have that responsibility of your clients and in a school your clients are your kids and nothing more precious than people's kids and i grew up with my mother uh teaching me many lessons about teamwork and uh and inclusion and respect and uh, i watched her build a magnificent school and singer is a school i i think i think singer is is a, is a cut off 
off that block elm tree middle school in suffolk um as it was and um and good things happen good things happen if you do good things it just, they just do and if you if you're doing things for the right reasons they may not happen as quickly as you'd like you have to be patient you have to be tenacious you have to be bloody minded and you have to be absolutely want it very badly and some ambition is clearly in there and some ego is clearly in there as well i won't i won't i mean it's a it's a complicated mix of things but i mean well we could have given up i could have given up on 30 40 50 occasions in the last 12 years and going this is just too freaking hard because it's not easy and I, in many ways i wouldn't wish this on on anybody but this is what it takes to create something that's that has some has something to it i think and it's and it's it is about the cars but in many ways it's it's not about the cars at all it's about many many other things that uh that are just as important and this is mean this comes back to this thing that you know everything is important really especially in a business you have to you have to you have to be sensitive to it all and it's it's just as much about the cars as it is the culture too and you're forming through your work that you're doing and the relationships that you're building a cultural connection as well, aren't you? Absolutely, and uh, you know, and, and we're, we're 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 meeting people all over the world. Um, we have we have cars in third. I think Deb said we had cars in 30, 30 countries early this, this this morning when I was talking to her, and um, we have a voice. You know, we have a voice. We have a point of view, and people and people listen to us. I mean, how thrilling! How thrilling to be able mm. to to put good stuff out into the world when you actually got people paying attention. It's like it's almost like a bit like being in a band. Um, I was going to say the parallels are fairly significant. Absolutely, that's very that's the the, the parallels are extremely similar. Um, yeah. And um, can parallels be similar? Our metaphors, <laughs> we'll go with it on that one. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think we know what I mean. Um, yeah, absolutely. I've noticed a lot of commonality and similarity to the to the process of making music and being in the music business and as to doing this and um you know you are you are presenting art but of course it's commerce as well so it's a delicate balance isn't it art and commerce because they don't they're not necessarily great bedfellows but um i think they can be if 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 again if the communication and the expectation is set and um life is all about communicating and setting expectation in, in, in my view and um that's what we try and do on a daily basis uh, at, at the company and and um we continue to you know we we, we we think we've got a bit of a rock and roll culture at, at, at singer which is good um you know we've had to embrace a little bit of uh some 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 good corporate uh practices as well because that's why they work as you know any good company requires process is something that we we haven't necessarily had in the past and um but a good a good mixture of both those things i think is is, is going to be essential so let's talk about the future a little bit um you have something known as a turbo study that you are just launching tell me about that the turbo study yes something we are thrilled and excited about it um so the the first 12 years of 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 of, uh, of singer has been has been somewhat of a normally aspirated um story um a big part of the folklore and the mythology behind the the air cool Porsche 911 of course is turbocharging in 1974 Porsche introduced the 930 turbo um as as their luxury grand touring um supercar this new term supercar was used started to get used i remember in 1975 as i was buying car magazine and auto car and motor magazine supercar i thought well, what's a supercar and of course a supercar was a ferrari berlinetta boxer it was a lamborghini countach and it was the porsche turbo and to many people of my age and my generation and perhaps many generations the quintessential porsche 911 has been the 930 turbo that was it was certainly it was certainly on my it was a certainly poster on my wall in the 1970s um and many others and um perhaps it's odd that singer has has has, has become known for for its work on the porsche 911 
for a version of the 9-11, which perhaps isn't the best known version of the early 9-11s that, we, that we've celebrated for the last 12 years, are perhaps the lesser known of the breed. And the, uh, the, the rock star has, was always the 930 Turbo. And of course, it was a fascinate, fascinating pivot by Porsche in the mid 70s to go from this delicate, slim hipped, um, um, uh, dainty sports car to this muscular, rubber draped monster of a flared wheel arch low and 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 menacing car the car the car took on a very different demeanor um porsche for me in the 1970s was synonymous with rubber black rubber beautifully molded black rubber which 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 ran around the perimeter of the whale tail ran around the bumpers wrapped these bizarre kind of bellows that that, that 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 were meant to squish together in case the in case the car was hit at, at, at low speed and the bumper could bounce back they called them impact bumpers which were part of, of course all instigated through the american legislation at the time which required cars to survive um low speed impacts and of course it, it had this profound effect on this icon, which had, I mean, the 911 was absolutely an icon in 1974. It was about 10 years old, and it, it had, you know, it, 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 Porsche had, 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 had enjoyed much success from it. And here they had to reimagine their delicate little sports car into something that was rather different. And 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 the the poster child for that was the Turbo, which was the wide the wide bodied version. And this was uh, this has been a car that our clients have been talking to us about for a long time, a car that's very dear to me, a car that, a, a car that fascinated me that I didn't necessarily want. I've never wanted a Porsche Turbo, which, mm. is, which is quite, I've wanted many other 911s, but not. so here, the, and then of course the seed was sown. So how, how can we come up with something that I want? <laughs> <laughs> and 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 that's what we've done and 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 so this is the first 930 turbo that um that that um that uh, that was pre presented um in a way that 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 I think I hope celebrates the original and takes it to takes take moves it on but here here we are um uh, presenting a, a a study where we will take the 964 Porsche 911 that we that we've that we've that we know and love and uh, restore and reimagine it to, to celebrate the 930 turbo from the from the from the, the mid 1970s um again a car for, a, a car for us which which um celebrates speed forced induction refinement grand touring um, quite different from the classic um, car that, uh, again, we've we've become we've become known for, and a good complement to that car, I think, um, and um, a, just a different flavour of Porsche 911 from a different era, and of course motivated by a very very different engine, and of course the possibilities for us to do our thing with such a with such a with such a prospect were, were so tantalising, and so so what what we show today is is the result of about eighteen months, two years of of, of study, and um, and um, and we hope we 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 sincerely hope everyone everyone likes it, and um, we're very proud of it. Well, and in fact, uh, the car will be running at the Goodwood Festival of Speed in England from June 23rd to the 26th. It will then travel to the Monterey Peninsula in Northern California for what we hope <laughs> will be Car Week in August of 2022. So uh, yes. very exciting. Let me ask you one thing that takes us back to uh, where we kind of started. There was a comment that was made a while ago on a Singer post that said that all the employees and Rob our OCD enthusiasts wrapped in a veneer of a business. <laughs> That's cool. Someone should write that down. I yeah. heard that. That's very good. <laughs> True. Yes. Well, I, well, yeah, yes. I mean, it's the, the veneer of a business. It sounds a bit dangerous. I'm sure. I'm. I'm, I'm sure some people would have a heart attack if it was only a veneer. I, I think you know. We 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 have we have grown up a lot. 
we have to have grown up a lot but this is this is what's so exciting jason it's this, this the you know what what can singer do what what you know what is singer and what do we do with this with this thing that's we've kind of stumbled upon in this very in this rather organic way and and it and it's and it's it's fascinating and, and i don't want to let it go and i don't want to lose the spirit and i don't want to lose the culture and i don't want to lose the focus and i don't want to lose the the reason that we exist um because if we do we, we'll we'll die and um we have to stick to our principle which is a it's a steve jobs principle right mm -hmm. i don't care i don't care how expensive to get that radius on that computer and get it just right because i want it and other people will want it and that is the uh, the philosophy by by which we live um we we have to we have to be brilliant and we only you can only be brilliant if you want to be brilliant because you want the thing that you are trying to make brilliant <laughs> and that 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 is if 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 everything is boiled down to that that is what singer is it's 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 not a committee it's not a uh, it's not a bunch of people st stroking their chins going what would people be interested in buying no it's that's we, we, we die when we start to think like that it's it's what do we want um and uh, personally and uh, let's go let's go and chase it until until it's perfect um whatever that may be and of course uh, who knows where we may go in the future but right now it's the Porsche 911 and this is a wonderful you know, it's a wonderful shop window to put our philosophy and our vision in front of the world with the um, with the finest sports car in the, in the world. And, and um, what, what better what better platform to to to, to show the world our, our sensibilities. Since this is cars and culture, I'll ask you one more thing, Rob, that relates to culture and kind of goes to my own passion that is beyond a 911. But let's it's music and in a 2007 interview, you said that members of Death Cab for Cutie and Interpol told you that without your work, their bands wouldn't exist. That's an impressive form of culture and lasting culture. Don't you feel? Uh, yes. I hope it's true. I think, I, th I, th I think it, I, I, I would, I would hope it's true. I think um, I would, I would, I would. Um, yes. I mean, I, I, I learned, I learned yesterday that, um, Billy Eilish is. I mean, Billy Eilish, Billy Eilish has sung two two cover versions of, of 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 two songs I wrote. I mean, yes, I I I, I it was just bonkers. I, I I texted a friend of mine last night and going, I tell it to, you know, he, he said, dude, you've you know you've got you've got the biggest pop star in the world singing your songs. You've got Porsche <laughs> building your engines. Um, <laughs> I, I That's think, it. I, End I, it right I there. Think, I think I think you've won. I, I don't know. I, it doesn't feel like I've won anything, but <laughs> I, I, I was I was there on, on the floor of my bedroom trying tr trying desperately to keep fit, doing some sit ups, and I and I lay back going, yeah, I guess that is quite cool, isn't it? Yeah, but it is um, cool. it, it, I mean, it's it's a uh, it's our foot is on the accelerator, and and these little moments go by, and I'm not very good at appreciating them, but um, maybe I should. And uh, yeah. If the, it, it, I think I think that we made some wonderful music as a band. We didn't sell we didn't sell enough records to keep our record company happy, but we did make some wonderful music. And and um, I'd love to think that we'll revisit that 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 music again in the future. Um, I think we will. And um, and what joy to be with another in another band of of, of like minded individuals messing around with cars. I mean, it, it, it life 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 doesn't get much better. Well, I'll tell you, uh, you you mentioned um, uh, you know reaching a certain nadir and 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 uh, and an apex of 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 careers. When Billie Eilish is then reimagining her nine eleven, I think the circle will be complete, Rob. Well, she's a she's a car girl, which is so fantastic. She loves cars and. Um, and uh, she drives around in a Dodge Charger. I think it's just fantastic. Um, so who, who, who knows? Maybe we'll build her a car one day. But uh, it's very cool. Love it. Thank you so much for being on the program. You are part of Cars and Culture, and I appreciate the time you've spent here. Thanks, man. It was a pleasure.
The automobile is one of the most important inventions that revolutionized the modern world. In America, the rich history of car culture runs deep as technology continues to shape the future of the industry. Jason Stein, former publisher of Automotive News, is here to share the stories of people passionate about cars, from industry leaders and innovators to car-obsessed celebrities. Buckle up as Jason takes you inside the boardroom, onto the track, and around the bend on Cars and Culture on Sirius XM Business Radio.